somebody shares it and it isn't necessarily that they particularly want to hurt the it person, they just don't care. Yeah. They're just reckless and that's yeah. the phrase that's used, reckless as to what the impact will be. Yeah. Sometimes um, images are sold, they're sold to porn sites and things like that. So it's actually for financial gain. This is Speak Up. Speak Up on Spin. Intimate, Intimate image abuse on Spin. Hi, I'm Ali Ryan and this is Speak Up on Spin. Now the sharing or threatening to share intimate images or videos without consent is a crime. Today I'm joined with the CEO of Women's Aid, Sarah Benson, who's going to chat about the correlation between coercive control and intimate image abuse. Obviously this is all about intimate image abuse, but there's a very strong correlation between coercive abuse as well and coercive control. So can you tell us a bit about, I suppose, what is coercive control? You're quite right. The, the kinds of abusive tactics like intimate image abuse can very often, though not always, form a part of a more um, complex abusive relationship and um, coercive control is also a criminal offence in this country and what that is is a pattern of multiple different behaviours, some of which on their own would not actually be considered criminal offences but when you take them together they have this impact of isolating somebody, uh, wearing them down, um, destroying their self-esteem um, and, and it's referred to sometimes as a freedom crime because it literally it, it shrinks somebody's world so that they feel that um, they, they can't leave or that, uh, that the abusive partner um, is literally in their head kind of gaslighting them and so the kinds of tactics that can be involved um, can include uh, emotional abuse, so kind of demeaning them, putting them down. It can also include things like economic abuse, which is an incredibly effective way to uh, hold somebody in control. So controlling money, um, kind of putting so much pressure on them that they give up work, for example, or you know taking taking their finances off them, um, and then other uh, kind of psychological tactics, which you know, like I say, like gaslighting, telling somebody that they're stupid all the time, um, kind of saying that tactics that they had perpetrated you know didn't happen so literally getting to the point where somebody feels like they're crazy um, and in that then you can of course also have forms of sexual and sexualized abuse and that can include um, intimate image abuse as well. I think it's important people understand that this can happen very slowly over a long period of time would there be any sort of red flags that you could talk about? So often the focus is on the person, the victim, the survivor, the person who's actually been subjected to the abuse. And that can really easily fall into kind of victim blaming as to why somebody didn't do something, why they didn't spot it, as opposed to why is somebody behaving this way towards, you know, a, a person that they, you know, um, say that they love and care for. And it is really insidious and it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, the vast majority uh, of, of us, if we go out with somebody and they spend the evening telling us we're stupid or, you know, asking for the passwords to our phone or you know there's no second date you're gone you know so it is really slowly over time building up these kind of um, building trust on the one hand and then kind of chipping away and the impact of this abuse is to literally get into somebody's head to the to the point where they're just kind of coping moment to moment surviving moment to moment which means that they're not able to kind of see the wood for the trees. And that's where the rest of us have a responsibility is to see those signs and to be that support and to intervene and to say, you know, you don't seem yourself. You know, you seem very different um, to a few months ago. You know, you, you, I notice you're very withdrawn or I notice you, you're kind of very, you, you jump any time that you get a text message from this person. It's something that can happen in the context of an abusive relationship where there may have been encouragement or consensual sharing of you know um, sexual uh, intimate images or you know um, you know videoing of um, kind of uh, intimate occasions and that can, might have been a consensual part of the relationship in some cases it's also not in some cases that that can also be coerced or somebody can feel um, uh, kind of browbeaten into doing it but one way or the other um, at the point where somebody is either escalating the abuse and it's quite common when somebody is maybe about to leave the relationship mm -hmm. or has ended the relationship. It's used as a, a threat to either bring them back or to um, just to, to hurt them, to hold it over them for, you know, uh, so that they live in fear or then the, the threat is acted out. So it's something that we've heard so many times and, um, you know, we're, we're really pleased now that at least when somebody phones us on the helpline, we can say, you know, that's now an offence, okay. you know. 
know that you know that you can actually yeah. and what I would say to the guards is that they would in the past have said they would try and do what they could yeah but often it was very difficult because the legislation wasn't there to back them up in terms of actually how you put an offence together yeah what would your advice be I suppose for the very first steps if someone's watching this now and they've been a victim recently and they don't know what to do so there's a few things uh, one you could pick up the phone and our number is 1-800-341-900 and just kind of just to have somebody to talk to about what's going on, how it's feeling for you, what you want to do. Um, if somebody doesn't want to do that, there is also um, a whole section on the womensaid.ie website around digital safety and that does include um, uh, the kind of steps that you can take, the practical steps, uh, and it, it includes information on hotline.ie, which um, just for, for listeners or, or viewers, isn't actually a helpline itself. It's a website, so the, the term hotline, people might think that that's uh, literally a, a number you can call. What it is, is um, quite a practical website um, that you know, you can actually look, there's um, kind of frequently asked questions around what is uh, intimate image abuse so that you can kind of say, is this something that's happened to me? Is that a fit? Um, and then if you want to make a report, um, there's uh, a way to do that or they can act as a fast track to maybe contacting the guards and making a report if you want to make a criminal complaint. It's not going to be one size fits all, but I think it's really important that people know there is information out that there's support and, and um, fundamentally, if, you know, if something feels incredibly urgent you know to contact the guards um, and and see if they can intervene straight away